You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of April. Indian PM Modi EU Chief Arsula agreed to launch Trade and Technology Council. Pakistan IMF agreed to extend stalled bailout package, increase loan size to 8 billion US dollars. And Sri Lankan president says he's ready to form interim government to resolve economic crisis. And now for all the details, the European Union and India has agreed to set up a trade and technology council to step up cooperation as the bloc's chief held talks with officials, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi, who have seen a flurry of top visits since the start of the Ukraine war. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is on a two-day trip to India's capital, part of Western efforts to encourage New Delhi to reduce ties to Russia, its main weapons supplier, following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in capital New Delhi on Monday as the West steps up efforts to encourage the South Asian nation to reduce ties to Russia, its main weapon supplier following Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Both the leaders held bilateral talks and agreed to launch the EU-India Trade and Technology Council while also committing to strengthen the strategic partnership. This strategic coordination mechanism will allow both partners to tackle challenges at the nexus of trade, trusted technology and security, and thus deepen cooperation in these fields between the EU and India, a joint statement said. Ursula identified cooperation on security, climate change and trade as the main areas of focus. Von der Leyen on a two-day trip to New Delhi also held talks with Indian Foreign Minister Subramanyam Jai Shankar, who said they exchanged views on the economic and political implications of the Ukraine conflict. India has refrained from explicitly condemning Russia's invasion while calling for an immediate end to violence. Moscow calls its actions in Ukraine a special military operation. The European Commission President, who is the chief guest of the Multilateral Foreign Policy and Geoeconomic Conference Raisana Dialogue 2022, earlier in the day laid a wreath at Rajkot, the resting place of India's freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi, who is also referred to as the father of the nation. An under-construction building collapsed in Indian capital New Delhi's Satya Niketan area on Monday, killing at least two people. Disaster management and fire department personnel rescued at least five labourers, while operations were still underway to find more survivors till the last reports came in. An under-construction building collapsed in Indian capital New Delhi's Satya Niketan area on Monday, killing at least two persons. Around six fire tenders and teams of NDRF, the National Disaster Response Force immediately rushed to the spot and managed to rescue at least five persons, out of which two succumbed to injuries, an official confirmed. Operations were still underway to find more survivors till the last reports came in. Illegal and unplanned construction and inferior building material in chaotic and congested urban conglomerates are the major reasons for building collapses in India. South Delhi Municipal Corporation Mayor Mukesh Suryan said the building was someone's house which was being repaired. It was in a danger zone and the same was notified to the police and the subdivisional magistrate, he said. And moving on, Pakistan's finance minister has said that the International Monetary Fund has agreed to increase the size of its $6 billion loan program by $2 billion to Pakistan and extend it for another year to prop up its balance of payments position and foreign exchange reserves. Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail said on Monday that Islamabad has sought an increase in the size and duration of its 6 billion IMF program. He made the comments in a video statement following talks with the IMF in Washington over the weekend. 
This followed after Pakistan agreed to roll back subsidies to the oil and power sectors ahead of a resumption next month of a review of the IMF's support for the country. In a news conference at the Pakistan embassy in Washington on Sunday, Finance Minister Ismail said that the government had no option but to withdraw the subsidies, but it would do so in a way that did not burden the ordinary people. Uh, the IMF has agreed to field a mission to Pakistan in the middle of May. We will start technical level discussions from uh, Tuesday. And uh, then when, when, when the mission comes to Pakistan, we will try to have an expedited staff level agreement with them. Uh, and after that agreement is reached, then we will look forward to receiving another tranche. I have requested the fund, and I think that's a largely, uh, largely they've agreed to extend this program for another year, but obviously these details will be thrashed out when the mission is in Pakistan. Pakistan's finance minister said the details will be decided when the mission comes to Pakistan in May. This covers $6 billion of support the IMF agreed in 2019 to extend to Pakistan. Payment of funds has been slowed down several times because of the IMF concerns over monetary policy and fiscal tightening measures. With a widening current account and foreign reserves falling as low as $10.8 billion, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external finances. The new Pakistani government that took over this month from ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan said it was facing enormous economic challenges with the risk of GDP growth falling and double-digit inflation it blames on the mismanagement of the previous administration. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's embattled president Gotabaya Rajpaksa has agreed to form an interim government to tackle the worst economic crisis in decades, a senior Buddhist monk has claimed as per reports. This comes as the government has failed to quell protests with public unrest over shortages of essentials amid soaring inflation. Sri Lanka's embattled president Gotabaya Rajpaksa has agreed to form an interim government to tackle the unprecedented economic crisis, senior Buddhist monk Made Gauda Dhamananda has claimed, as per reports on Monday. The monk said Rajapaksa expressed his intention in response to a letter on April 4 from the powerful Buddhist clergy in which they had asked him to dissolve the cabinet. This comes as protests have continued to intensify across Sri Lanka over the worst economic crisis in decades. Thousands of university students on Sunday held a huge march rally to the president's office and the residence of his brother, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, but were blocked by police barricades. The South Asian nation of 22 million people is struggling to pay for essential imports, including food, fuel and medicines, after a steep drop in foreign exchange reserves, leading to soaring inflation. This comes as the World Bank over the weekend said it was preparing an emergency aid package, including 10 million US dollars for medicines for the crisis-stricken country, while IMF, the International Monetary Fund, said it held fruitful technical discussions with Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Ali Sabri and other officials over a loan request. The World Bank did not provide a total value for its aid package, but Sabri said last Friday that about 500 million US dollars was being considered. The IMF has said that Sri Lanka's debt needs to be put on a sustainable path before it could make new loans to Colombo. And moving on to news from Nepal, hundreds of candidates have filed nominations for the local body election slated to be held on May 13th in Nepal. The final name list will be published on April 29th after scrutiny by the Election Commission. Scores of candidates have filed their nominations for the local body elections slated to be held on May 13th in Nepal. The two-day candidacy filing process started from around 10 a.m. on Sunday and continued on Monday till 5 p.m. As many as 79 parties have registered themselves to contest elections at the local level. 
On April 27 and 28, the Election Commission will examine the nominations and any complaints registered against them. The final name list of the candidates will be published on April 29 and election symbols will be given to them on April 30. आगामी तीस गते निर्वाचन होने गई रहा था ऐसे संदर्भ में आज बैसा के गारा गते र बली बारा गते उम्मीदवारी मनोनयन को कार्यक्रम रहेगा था र निर्वाचन आयोग ले निर्धारण करेगा उसका कार्यक्रम अनुसार आज कार्यक्रम मान और पालिका को उम्मीदवारी मनोनयन को कार्यक्रम से र मनोनयन को कार्य आज बिहार � the Election Commission has stepped up preparations for the polling as a total of 6,743 types of ballot papers have to be printed. Nepal last held the local elections in 2017 in three phases. Over 17 million eligible voters will elect 35,221 representatives for 753 local units, 6 metropolitan cities, 11 sub-metropolitan cities, 276 urban and 460 rural municipalities. And Afghanistan's only dairy plant in eastern region collects milk from villagers living around Jalalabad, bringing change to their living condition. The dairy farmers are struggling to meet demand and hopes for boom of the dairy farming industry in the country. Khathis Labaniyat or Eastern Dairy is the only dairy plant in Afghanistan's eastern region. The factory collects milk from 1,500 villagers living around Jalalabad and can process 5,000 litres of milk per day. The factory packs milk for sale but also produces cheese, yogurt and cream. As the demand for dairy products have increased, the plant is struggling to meet the demands. The Eastern Dairy depends on cattle owners who require peace and stability to produce. لند پاره شده من خال رسیدگی نوشه که ولی مارکتام خده تولیدم کم ده بازار تا شده هنوش ولی پدی خطر بانی که بازار که تقاضا یا دیمان زیاد ده او مونج شده پکم اندازه بازار تخبل لبنی مسئولات عرضه کو تقریبا دل تا ترشل نفر پوره فول تیم کار که چه پغیر مستقیم دول تقریبا تبریز را کردن پوره دی سخا مستفیدین ده او استفاده کن کی دی اتحادی سخا Cattle owners are happy that selling their milk to the dairy plant generates income, which has led to change in their living condition. They hope for boom of the dairy farming industry in the country. According to local analysts, dairy cooperative between the government and the private sector will help stabilize the economy and create jobs emphasizing the importance of maintaining tranquility for reconstruction in the war-torn country. The practice of selling milk was once forbidden by the Taliban. And the sacred month of Ramadan is currently being celebrated by Muslims across India. Amid the holy month, local residents in India's northern German Kashmir territory were seen flocking shops to buy various religious items from skullcaps to perfumes over the weekend. Customers flocked shops selling various religious items from skull caps to perfumes during the holy month of Ramadan in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Sunday. Sales of fruits like dates and religious items usually go high during the Ramadan. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. During the month, Muslims pray six times a day, one more than usual. They do not take food or water from dawn to dusk. They eat sehri, a pre-dawn meal, and break their day-long fast with iftar. Ramadan में थोड़ा ज़्यादा ही होता है क्योंकि ये इबादत का महीना है इसीलिए इसमें ज़्यादा ही चलता है टोपी चलता है तेज़ भी चलता है इतर चलता है. Muslims account for about 14 percent of India's 1.2 billion plus population. The Muslim majority region was visited by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday for the first time after the government revoked the region's special status in 2019. PM Modi addressed thousands of his supporters in Samba district to mark Panchayati Raj, a day that commemorates grassroots democracy in India. He also launched power and connectivity projects worth 2.62 billion US dollars in the federal territory. After revoking Article 370 of the Indian Constitution and other related provisions in 2019, Jammu and Kashmir state was bifurcated into two federally administered territories on October 31, with the Jammu region and Kashmir Valley comprising one 
and the Buddhist enclave of Ladakh forming the other. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.